Hi guys, so today I'll be working out here in the shop. I'm really excited about it. I haven't been out here in a while and I'm in the mood to make something. So I'll be making a few spa benches. And you may remember a few years ago I had done a video on where I had taken a box springs apart. And you know how some of those box springs have perfect pieces of wood underneath uh, to kind of hold the springs in place. Um, I had taken that apart and ended up making a spa bench for us in our bathroom. I still have it in there. What I plan to do today is make two of them that are similar to that one, but I have a few changes that I want to make. I went to Kime about a month ago and picked out some wood that I think will work for these. Of course, I wanted something that can uh, stand to be in moisture uh, since these little spa benches I plan to use in the cottages in the shower rooms I had done some research and found out that teak wood is a really good wood to use on pieces that will get you know moisture But when I saw the price I thought I'm gonna do some more research and uh, to make a long story short I ended up buying some cypress boards uh, Cypress of course is also a good wood that you know stands some moisture. It's not quite as pricey as teak wood so that's what I plan to use. If these benches end up not lasting more than a couple of years, it's okay. I didn't just spend a whole lot on them and I can always just build some more or go another route the next time. But I'm gonna try, see how Cypress works. So what I have in front of me here are four boards. Two of them are this size and then two of them are a little bit wider. And of course with spa benches, I want lots of spaces to be in between my pieces of wood that will also help with you know drying it out. So what I'll probably do first is take these on the rip table or the table saw and just cut them down to the right size. And then I have some measurements here that I took off of my little spa bench in our bathroom. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do different is I'm gonna make it not quite as high as mine is because I feel this, these little benches will probably be used for a shaving bench also. And mine is just a little bit high for that. So I'm gonna keep them closer to maybe 15 inches. I think mine is 18 inches. So join me as I work out here and enjoy. Often when I make pieces like this, you know, having no pattern or exact measurements really to go by, I'll just start out by making, you know, one section. In this case, I'll make the seat of the bench first. I know what size I want that to be. And then once I have that made, I can kind of eyeball it and see, you know, how wide I want my legs to be or do I want to add another shelf on the bottom or not. It's just easier for me to kind of visualize as I go versus, you know, having little drawing or exact measurements to start out with. I'm going to build kind of like a frame out around the edges of my top and then in the center I'll have just slats of wood with space in between again that way you know the wood can dry plus I really like that look I want to show you guys how absolutely cool this miter saw is um, I even have a light on the top of the saw if I just press the button without even cutting or moving the blade. Just press this little button on the top and it will provide a shadow on my piece of wood exactly where the cut is going to be. Um, it's so handy like you know if you have the, your wood at exactly the right place. So I was trying to figure out how I could get these measurements or pattern to you guys in case you want to make a little spa bench exactly like this. So what I'll probably do is create a list of all of these separate pieces down below in the description box. Although at the same time I realize I should have a drawing included with that so you guys know where, you know, what, what piece goes where. Uh, but of course I'm not really set up at this point to do that. I know you can probably do that with a certain program. So I think what I'll do is again I'll put the measurements down below in the description box of all of the little pieces that I have here. And then as I'm assembling this bench I will flash it on the screen what size I'm using at that moment. That way if you actually want to make a bench like this you could probably you know go ahead and cut all of your pieces, sand them down, you know get them ready and then kind of assemble them as I'm assembling them. You'd probably have to watch the video to do it. So we'll see how that turns out and maybe it's not something you want to do exactly the same as you know it doesn't have to be this exact measurement but 
Uh, this is just one little idea, I guess. And of course I'm making two benches here, but I'll just be assembling one of them here in the video to show you guys kind of how I'm doing it. And the first step, of course, is sanding every little piece. It's always easier to sand it before putting things together. <laughs> Let's put this thing together and if you at all have all of the wood pieces that I have down below in the description box listed, uh, maybe we can do this together. I'll try my best to go slow enough that you can follow along and yet keep it moving. Some of the tools you'll definitely need are drills, uh, clamps, uh, screws, and I have this amazing tool here that I really like. You could do without, but once you actually use it you think you almost can't, but it's called a Craig jig. Um, it's to drill holes in if you want to butt two pieces of wood together uh, like this. You can actually drill holes at a slant to connect them. And then you put your screw in to you know, fasten them together. And you don't have any screws or anything like pins or anything exposed on the outside. So that's the really nice thing about this tool. Um, it's not super expensive. I'll also link it down below in the description box in case you're looking for a tool like that. And for me, I have my air nailer, which you could really do without this too. It's just one place in this little bench that I'm going to use it. Um, you could probably replace this with maybe just screws if you don't have access to air. And then glue is also a necessity. I'm going to start out by making the frame part of the top, like the outer edges of the wood. I'm going to put those together and then my center of that top is going to get separate little pieces of wood like I mentioned before. And then I'm also doing the legs. I have those sitting here. So this is the seat part of the bench and I have sort of like a frame out around as you can see. So what I need to do is drill my holes into these pieces on both sides to fasten them onto my long pieces.
glassy the top to the legs and skirting part. And as you can see, I used my Craig jig once more and drilled some holes into the skirting part. Um, I did three on the long ones and then just one in the center of the short ones. Now the last thing to add are my little pieces of wood for the seat part and for now I'll just glue them in and then once the glue has dried I'm going to nail them from the bottom side that way they're nice and fastened and won't pop off if I nail them before gluing them. I should probably measure but I think I'm just going to eyeball it for my spacing. Um, it seems fairly easy to do that. A few days later and I'm ready to finish these little benches. My glue has dried perfectly. I almost wouldn't even need to fasten these little pieces but I am going to uh, flip them upside down and fasten them, fasten them from the bottom up. That way I don't have any holes on the top. Then I'll go ahead and sand everything, make everything nice and neat. And then I have this putty here that is close to the same color as this wood that I plan to fill in these little holes here. As you remember on the legs I had pinned or nailed them together. I plan to fill those holes with putty and then I plan to finish them off giving them a top coat, something kind of waterproof because these will be getting a lot of moisture. In fact, probably direct water at times. So um, I have a plan, something I want to try. And again, if this doesn't work long term, it's not that big a deal. I didn't spend that much on them, but it's more of an experiment for me. I plan to use polycrylic by Minwax and the sheen is satin in this case. Often I like to get matte but it seems it's a little bit harder to find. Um, I think satin will be okay. Give it a coat of this. Uh, this goes really well through the sprayer. It's thin enough. I don't need to thin it down or anything. And then after that is dry I plan to use Annie Sloan Clear Wax over the entire piece. Once the benches were completely dried, I lightly sanded them with a fine grit sandpaper. 
and then I apply the anti sloan clear wax using a brush and then a rag to kind of buff them. Since these little benches will be going into the shower rooms at the cottages, I couldn't wait to get them over there to take my final pictures of them. Thankfully, our tile work is all finished in the showers. I do think they look pretty good in here. I love the combination of the whites, a little splash of black, and then the natural wood. Gotta say, I'm really happy with how these little spa benches turned out. Um, I'm impressed with how sturdy they are. I feel like anyone can sit on them, and I guess time will tell whether or not they're gonna endure the moisture they're gonna be in. And again, I'll have all of those measurements down below in the description box in case you're wanting to make one exactly like this. And hopefully I explained it well enough here in the video that you can kinda you know, make it with me if you decide to do something like this. I love the idea that I saved a bunch of money by making them myself instead of buying them because I did want a little bench like this in those wet rooms. Before ending here, I do have a new Etsy product announcement I wanted to share with you. Last winter I made some natural whipped body butter and I've been using it ever since. I wanted to test it out for a good half year, just make sure it's something I wanna sell on the Etsy shop. I even gave some to family and friends and I got some feedback from them. I'll be honest, it's something I could not be without. I love my whipped body butter. Found these cute little jars that are the perfect size for it. Got MB to design these pretty labels. And I always like if I make something, especially in, along the soap line, something that maybe you use every day, I like to have it good looking enough that you can actually have it setting out like on your vanity. Um, I just think these are adorable. They're not too busy, just a nice, fresh, clean look, something that will look good in, with any decoration and also would make a lovely gift, I think. But best of all, and Pebbles decided to join us again, I'll just quickly share with you how I use this product. And of course, body butter is more on the greasy side. So for myself, I don't use it in the morning like on my face or anything. I don't wanna walk around all day with a greasy face, but I love this for after I you know, shave my legs or any dry spots that I have, especially during the winter, you know, elbows and even arms. For the most part, I use it after I'm finished showering in the evening. We even took this along on our beach vacation. Um, it's good for if you got a little too much sun, like we sometimes did. It's just good for your skin to keep it moisturized, you know, keep it from peeling. And I did get some feedback from some of the others that have been using it. And they also love it, to, you know, after they finish shaving. And somebody, I'm trying to think, was it mom that said she sometimes uses it on her face, like before she goes to bed. She just likes how you know smooth and moisturizing it feels to her skin so if you want to try something new head on over to the Etsy shop I of course only have a certain amount that I'm making for this first batch of just kind of testing the water to see how much interest there is and so far we only have the one scent which is a lavender and lemon and it smells so good and fresh and again I love the fact that I can say everything is natural in there hopefully soon we'll have some more scents and feel free to make some requests down below in the comment section uh, if you have a certain scent that you'd like to see. So enough on that. Uh, thanks so much guys for watching. I hope your summer has been going great for you. Can't believe it's almost September. Time goes way too fast. And as always, I hope your day is going great. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.